this is Arthur Nix with EWKS, and today I'm going to talk about overtime rules and the calculations behind them. It's important for an estimator to understand the math of how heavy bid calculates the overtime and the reason behind it. So let's go first of all look at the reason behind it. When you are using heavy bid, and as an estimator, you really don't know if a person is going to be working on a Friday or a Saturday, on a Monday. So you have to spread out the overtime over the work week. And that's the basic, basic premise of an, the overtime, uh, what I call the overtime factor. So you, the estimator has to make the assumption that a crew is working a 50-hour work week, a 60-hour work week, 40-hour work week, whatever. And of course, in heavy bid, you can have multiple calendars in an estimate. So right now I'm in an estimate and I go to setup, more, and then I go to overtime rules. So here's the standard overtime rule. I got one and a half over eight hours. I got time and a half over zero hours and time and a half over zero here. So why do I put zero there? Because I've already assumed that the crew has worked uh, 40 hours or eight hours a day for five shifts. You notice that in heavy bid, it doesn't calculate over 40. So it's very important that you don't put time and a half over 40. It will not calculate correctly. So uh, but as I'm going to show you in a minute, it works out either it, uh, works out for time and a half over 40 or time and a half over eight. And the only exception is one uh, calendar and that would be the 410 and I'm going to show you the workaround with that. So to better illustrate this, uh, what heavy bit is doing, I'm going to go into Excel and show you some calculations that I've done that hopefully will clear up what this is doing in heavy bid. So I'm going to go out here to Excel and let's look at my first example here. I got somebody making 20 bucks and the overtime ratio is time and a half over eight. Now we're going to get to the time and a half over 40 in a little bit. Uh, so I got a work week Monday through Friday. My straight time is eight hours a day. I got overtime. And then if I convert these overtime hours to straight time, I will get the equivalent of the overtime pay in a straight time format. So if you come over here to the right hand side, you can see what I mean. If I take two hours times $20 times the time and a half, I get $60. Or let's say I pay that person three hours. Okay, that's the equivalent number of hours uh, the, the two times 1.5 times $20 gives me $60. So it's the same calculation. So if you look over here to the right, I got 40 and I got 10. However, my pay hours, if I'd use the three hours a day, I got 15 hours right here. 15 hours of straight time, okay, is equivalent to my 10 hours of overtime. So I, all I do is I give a ratio, hours paid divided by hours work, which is the 55 divided by 50. You can look at my formula right here. I'll just click on this and there it is right there. My 55 divided by 50 gives me a factor of 1.1. Now let's look at the test of that. Let's go look at an actual payroll example. Here it is right here. And if I use my 1.1 factor and the $20, so if you look at this calculation right here, I have my $20 times, let's roll this up here. Um, I have it times the I-13. Uh, then I have it times the B-2. So I got the 10 hours right here. There's the B and there's the, the, um, $20, which is my B2 times I13. And let's come down here. There's my ratio. Okay, so it's just basically 10 times 20 times 1.1 gives me $220. So I just add it up for the week. I get $1,100. 
So that's the test. Now we'll see how payroll does it. Well, there's the straight time pay, which is just eight times 20, 160 bucks. Now I have this, which is my $20 times 1.5 times the two hours gives me $60 or 220. You can see here they're equal. If I add it up for the week, it's equal. So what I'm trying to show here is the ratio of 1.1 will work if you take it by the actual each hour, multiply it by 1.1, and then you will get the total uh, for the week, assuming that this person is going to be working a standard 50-hour work week or whatever week it is, which you have to be as an estimator. Um, let's go on down here and look at, look at the... Uh, so here it is. What's the ratio of straight? Let's look at another way here. Let's look at at pay. Instead of hours, let's look at at, at pay. So if I paid that person $1,100, okay, but let's say it's just the straight time pay over that same period, that would be the $20 times 50, okay, without the overtime factor, that's 1000 What's the ratio that I need to go from straight time pay to overtime or the total paid, well, it's a ratio of 1.1. So this example right here, which again is going to be available to you on my blog, is you can do it by a ratio of hours, hours paid divided by hours worked, or you can do it by just hours paid. I mean, not hours paid, but, but pay, total pay. Uh, I could have also done it on a daily pay, you know, so there's a lot of ways to get to this ratio right here. Um, obviously, this ratio is going to change as you change your calendar. All right, let's look at also, uh, let's look at it in terms of a real, uh, real scenario on a, a job site here. I got Pete's pay at $20, and I got an overtime factor of 1.1. What does that mean? That's a 510 at time and a half. And uh, so, you know, here we are right here. We got activity one through five. You know, Pete works the Monday right here. He's got uh, uh, eight hours here, two hours on activity five. Now these could be on different, you know, pay items. Uh, Tuesday, I got a total of 10. Here's my 10. I got 10 and I got 10. So if I take the $20 and look at my calculation, I take the sum across each activity, you know, activity one here for the week, and I got uh, times the hourly pay, which is the B2, and then I got the overtime factor. So again, I got 484, 132, 88, 88, 308. I got $1,100. I could have also just, I could have also just totaled it up here for each day and it still would have added up to eleven hundred dollars we can go back and see that uh, we can see right here that the eleven hundred dollars is my payroll amount right here pay eleven hundred dollars eleven hundred dollars so it does agree we'll go back and look at heavy bid as an example also at the different activities but you have to understand as an estimator you are assuming that that if a person is working one hour on one activity, or in this case, they're working two hours here on activity five, that somewhere else during the day they're working another, you know, eight hours if it's a five ten to give you a total of ten hours a day. So, uh, you know, again, this is not going. You know, we're not getting into the example of well, I can only work six hours. Uh, total in the day, but I got to pay eight. I'll probably do that in some other video. I just want to get the basics of the overtime factor here today. So let's look at the example of the overtime over 40. And I know a lot of people worried about that. They say, oh, this, this can't work because we pay over 40. Now, true, heavy bid calculates only over eight hours. It, it cannot do the over 40, but I'm going to show you that it doesn't matter. So here's an example. My work week is 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. But on Friday, it's 10 hours of overtime. We're going to get right back to the equivalent hours. 
You notice here I pay straight time 10 until I get to Friday, which is 10 times 1.5. So again, 15 hours of straight time pay is equal to 10 hours of overtime pay. What is my ratio? Well, again, it's 55 divided by 50, right? My actual work, 50 hours divided by my uh, pay divided by work is 1.1. Look at the payroll. $200, $200, which is 20 times 10. On Friday, I get my $300, right? I get my time and a half, and 800 plus 300 gives me $1,100, same as 20 times 50 times 1.1. So just to recap the overtime, the spreadsheet that I made here, I uh, had overtime over 40. I showed how that worked. Uh, then I showed how the actual, you know, activities would work and how it accumulated up to a 50-hour work week with $1,100. That's our payroll calculation. And then I showed how the factor is actually calculated, either with equivalent straight-time hours, which is how, what I like to use, in, you know, when I'm teaching this, this uh, concept, or it can actually use with, uh, with actual pay, a ratio of actual pay and the straight time pay over the, the, the same number of hours. So a number of ways that you can calculate this, this factor right here. So let's go back to heavy bid. All right, <clears throat> and you can see here I'm on a activity. I have a five, five tens right here. Look down here, I got my 1.1 factor. Let's go look at that. Let's right click and let's show calculation. So I have my straight time hours. I'm taking all of the hours right here, 39.64 in this example, and I'm multiplying that by 18. Here, let's do it another way. Let's just make this 50 hours. Now I got 50 hours for this foreman. I right click, show calculation. The straight time pay is just 50 times $18. Now I got to pick up the overtime, which is the additional 10% or a factor of 110 gives me $90 right here. Now there might be some burdens that calculates with the 1.1. We're going to ignore that for today. That's kind of a topic for another video because we're concentrating here on the overtime. So I'm getting all of my overtime pay in this 50 hours right here. And you can see the other. What if I change that now to be a 512? Well, all it's going to do, it's going to ask me a question, first of all, is do I keep the calculation at 87.2 or I'm, I'm going getting more hours? I'm getting more hours. I'm working another two hours a day. So I should get more hours here. And there we go. I get a factor now of 116.67. And you can do the Work out the math, and it will indeed work out to 116.67. So a couple other things. Let's go look at our 410 example. If we do have the rule where we might want to work 410s, all right, so I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go to the 410 work week. Now you see here it will calculate the 110 right here. A couple of ways I can do that. I can say, look, I want to just make this 100% for my 410. Bam, I have taken count, I have taken, and there it is right there. Is now will override this to be 100%. Let's go back and do it. Let's go back and here, let's go to another one right here and let's make this 410s. And you can see now I have no overtime in this particular activity. So that's how I can account for the overtime, um, no overtime on a 410. Now here's a word of warning on the, you know, using these, these calendars. Uh, there are times, especially in utility work, road work, where you have to work nights, weekends, that type of thing. So you might have to assume that it's an all overtime situation. So what I mean by all overtime is you're assuming that they've already worked the 50. You shouldn't then just continue to use that 50 hour work week 
for that situation. So let's just make up another activity. I got a water line down here and I'm going to assume that uh, I have a cut in here and this is so I have another activity I'll just call it 160.1 and I'm going to say night um, you know this would be uh, I actually will cut in the, the the new main or you know probably have a wet tap but it can only be done at night I got the crew out there and so I just say okay and I'll call this one shift all right, I'm going to get my utility crew down here. There's my water main crew, and I'm working one shift that I know is going to be all overtime. However, when I come over here, I don't have an all overtime, as you can see, and I'm only getting 1.1. So really, I'm penalizing myself because they've already worked the 50-hour work week. So what am I going to do now is I'm going to come up here to my calendars and I'm going to say overtime and this is all overtime and I'm just going to come down here and say look it's you know Saturday uh, 10 hours on Saturday uh, it doesn't really matter if it's eight hours 10 hours and because it's going to be the same overtime factor so now I come here and I come here and I look for my all overtime. There it is right there. And now I've changed this so I now have time and a half. This can work for your roadway tie-ins. Uh, it could work for maybe some special MOTs that have to be done on, especially on weekends and at nights uh, that you know the crew has already worked, you know, at least 50 hours, uh, if not more. So, uh, very important also, if you're doing change orders, don't penalize yourself using a 50-hour work week if the change order requires night work and, and the crew is going to have to just extend their work week into the weekend and it's going to be all overtime. So that kind of wraps it up for this video. Uh, I, I went over the math, how exactly the math works. It's a very elegant way of solving the problem of applying overtime. We don't want to have uh, overtime rates here. We want to have straight time rates and then we want to apply an overtime factor to get the overtime. Uh, and then I covered here the overtime rules. Here's the standard overtime rule and how it can work with the calendars. Uh, the, the second rate and third rate here, this if you had like double time over 10 hours and you know triple time over 12 hours and there are places that have that kind of uh, work rule so be aware of that so i hope you enjoyed this video and again this is arthur nix with ewks uh, my goal and my company's goal is to help you better understand heavy bid and to also better understand the um, calculations that are behind uh, all be you know behind what heavy bid does.